These five tricks make the hardest integrals easy. You need to know them. Let's start off with the most important one. When you do a substitution on an integral which doesn't change the bounds, you get something like this, where the integrand has changed. But of course the bounds are the same, which means you can add the two integrals together. So 2i is equal to this, and you can combine them as so, and i is half of the sum of these two integrals. This should make sense to you. We're going to be using this a lot, so keep this in mind. The next one is King's Rule. I don't know why it's called King's Rule, to be honest. It should be called the border flip substitution because the substitution just flips the graph about the borders. Here's what I mean. f of c minus x is the graph of f of x reflected about c on 2, which is a vertical line. And if you don't understand why this is true, well, just check out the video in the description. It explains it really simply. You can prove King's rule using a substitution, or you can just use a nice geometric intuition. So let's say you had this graph which goes from A to B, and you want to find the integral. Well, you can just reflect the graph about the midpoint, giving f of A plus B minus X, and find the integral again. But notice that it's the same as before. We haven't changed anything about the integral. We've just changed which way we're looking at the function. The most common form of King's rule is when the bottom bound is zero, giving us this formula. We're going to be using this. Okay, let's do a quick example. So when the bounds are zero to something, you might want to try King's rule. So we replace x with pi on 2 minus x in the function. And that will turn the sines to cosines and the cosines to sines. To be honest, you should be able to skip the first step here. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we have two different forms of the same integral. So that integral is just half of the sum of these forms using the first trick. And notice that when you combine the fractions, you just get one. And now, well, if you can't do this, I don't know why you're watching this video, the answer would just be pi on 4. There we go. Trick number 3, the minus x substitution. To be honest, this is secretly just a king's rule, where if you do the king's rule on the left integral, you get this, and the a and minus a cancel, leaving you with f of minus x, and the bounds haven't changed at all. So whenever you have the bounds as minus a to a, you can use this. Okay, example time. So you see the bounds are minus 1 to 1, it makes sense to do the minus x substitution, so we replace x with minus x in the integrand. The x squared won't change because it's an even function, and the e to the x becomes e to the minus x. When you see an e to the minus x, you can consider multiplying and dividing by e to the x, and that would give you this. So now we've removed the negative exponent, we have two forms of the same integral, so we add them together and divide by 2 using the first trick, and notice the x squared can be factored, and when you factor it, you can actually cancel out the 1 plus e to the x on the top and bottom. The integral from minus 1 to 1 of x squared is twice the integral from 0 to 1, because x squared is an even function. And there we go, we have our answer of 1 on 3. Next up, we have the 1 on x substitution, and this is very useful when the bounds are of the form a to 1 on a. How do you prove it? Well, you just let u equal 1 on x. So when x is a, u is 1 on a, and when x is 1 on a, u is a. And also dx is minus 1 on u squared du. Now we can use this minus sign to swap the bounds, and then dummy variable u to x, because the variable doesn't matter as long as the structure of the integrand and also the bounds are the same. Okay, let's see this trick in action. Okay, so notice how the bounds are of the form a to 1 on a. So we simply apply the trick, replacing x with 1 on x in the integral, also putting in a 1 on x squared. And now we just clean things up. And we have two different forms of the same integral. So we add them together and divide by 2 using the first trick. But then what do we do now? Well, tan inverse x plus tan inverse 1 on x actually has a very nice identity. It's equal to pi on 2 for any positive x value. If you want to know why, check out my video in the description. Okay, so now it's simply a natural log, sub in the bounds, and we have our answer pi on 2. Let's do another example. Okay, don't click off, don't be scared by the infinity, it's not that deep. I'm going to tell you why these bounds are actually of the form a to 1 on a. Okay, so if you look at the graph of 1 on x, well, what is 1 on infinity? Well, that's clearly approaching 0, but it's approaching 0 from above, so it's technically 0 plus. And what is 1 on 0? Wait a minute, that's undefined, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is, but this is technically 1 on 0 plus, because we're approaching 0 from the right side which is the positive side of the x-axis. And as you can see on the graph of 1 on x, that approaches infinity. 
So evidently these bounds are of the form a to 1 on a, so we can use the substitution. When you do that, you replace x with 1 on x and put in a 1 on x squared, clean things up, and you get this, because ln 1 on x is minus ln x. The integral is equal to its own negative, and the only number which satisfies this property is 0. You could add the integrals together and see that as well. That's pretty crazy, because if you look at the graph of the integrand, it tells you that these two areas have to converge to the same value, because the areas above and below the x-axis have to cancel out for the full integral to be 0. Now for the last one, the symmetrical rule. Formally, the rule goes something like this. But okay, what does that actually mean? Well, let's look at it this way. When you reflect f of x about the vertical line a plus b on 2, you get f of a plus b minus x. But if that graph is also equal to f of x, then the reflection didn't do anything. In other words, the graph is unchanged when you reflect it. So f of x is actually symmetrical about a plus b on 2. Let's look at an example. If you have a graph like this, well, it's clearly symmetrical about the midpoint of the interval, right? You can see that the full integral is actually twice the integral from a to a plus b on 2. Look carefully at that. You can also prove this algebraically by splitting up the integral at the midpoint and letting x equal a plus b minus u on the second integral. I'll leave that to you as an exercise. A more common form of this trick is when the bottom bound is 0, giving us this formula. Okay, let's do a question. You could do this by finding the antiderivative of sine squared, but that's more complicated. Instead, you can do a king's rule at the start, and sine pi minus x is just sine x. So wait a minute, the king's rule didn't do anything. But actually, that means that the integral is twice the integral from 0 to pi on 2, because sine pi minus x is sine x. The bounds are still 0 to something, so we can do a king's rule, giving us this. We have two forms of the same integral, you add them together and divide by 2, and well, sine squared plus cos squared is just 1, so it simplifies so nicely, and the answer is pi on 2. You can take a look at all the tricks here, and you can use most of these to solve this crazy integral, which I'll leave to you. Let me give you a clue. Don't waste your time trying to find an antiderivative for log sine x. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. The next stop is at 1k subs, so if you could put me down the track, that would be great.